incredible pyramids and uh, very, very famous Chichen Itza, Uchimal, Kabar, Latina, etc., etc., as um, uh, information in uh, Yucatan state that we do not have uh, lakes or rivers. All the water in immense, huge amounts are underground, and most of it is pure, pristine waters. So the ranch, as Miguel said, is a large, it's a 1.5 kilometers, like a rectangular, um, on the sides, and one kilometer back and forth. And the moment that we leave uh, the highway, which is, by the way, one kilometer off the highway, uh, very slow, very few cars are passed uh, through that uh, highway, uh, it's all uh, forested area, all around. Nothing chemical, no going, no raising animals, no cattle, no poison, not everything. So uh, there, people come. We have already had a visitor from Switzerland, from Italy, Spain, Germany, Canada, USA, Argentina, etc., etc. And uh, the information I've been gathering from uh, people by sending emails, and uh, of course we work with uh, what is now uh, known as a work away. So it's a working tourism that uh, they all fall into a definite uh, profile. They want uh, ecology, they want uh, pure water, air, food, they want uh, organic agriculture, they hate the GMOs, uh, no hybrids, uh, heirloom seeds, uh, and be barefoot, learn, meditate, have a yoga and more, and more. So we offer that and more, and more. I'm particularly uh, interested in, uh, of course, living a long, long life. So uh, we are working on what is known and not too many, many people know about Cayacalpa. And Cayacalpa is that we could go, we recycle ourselves. So nowadays, it's not uh, really, it seems, uh, to concern the most Italian, avant-garde people, science, the distant, uh, on planet Earth, uh, in rejuvenating, is in not dying at all. Recycling, recycling, recycling ourselves. Maybe animals cannot do that, some do. But the, uh, us, uh, with our will and knowledge, can do that. That's the concept of uh, Calle Galpa, which is uh, very ample information in Internet. So as far as food, we all know that's uh, <laughs> a secret that the uh, whole planet knows that we should eat organic, uh, mostly uh, plant-based uh, food, we are supposed not to be the whole year eating, eating, eating. We are supposed to, when there is a little food, as there is a plentiful food, a scarce food. So we just fast. So the second and the larger segment of life is eating and fasting. If we fail to fast, we happen to get uh, weaker. Uh, sick and grow old faster. So that's uh, very important. It's not the uh, next week, uh, next year. No, this year, times of plentiful food, and then we must uh, fast. And it's not a one day fast. I've seen there at the ranch of the guy, his name Pete Allen, uh, fasting for 41 days and he was transformed into a new being. He didn't feel hunger at all. He was nervous, anxious, what people, most people say, um, if I don't eat, I get, you know, uh, hunger pangs. No, 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 no. So what we have there when we are fast is a key I have prepared, but just the energy is 
must be high some days, you know, after that. And uh, they just uh, fast, and that's it. And days pass by, and of course, uh, we have a laxative, uh, we have a massage, uh, sweat the large, uh, which uh, is called in uh, Mexico uh, Temazcal, from the center of the country, the uh, Nahual Temazcali. And what is this? A dome made out of mud or rock stones and hot, very hot um, rocks um, outside, you know, heated outside, brought inside, and people, you know, cover inside and sweat. Of course, this is, um, this is dome, the special moon phase, and the shaman is supposed to perform things. So, quite interesting. People love it, and uh, we know that um, uh, two years ago to Yucatan to have uh, Mayan uh, uh, marriages performed by a shaman and to have uh, the, the mascali and to enjoy the knowledge of the Mayans in herbs and healing and uh, of course seeing all their old uh, Mayan architecture. So the idea really is to have a clear here knowledge of what food should be all about. Because we know that uh, nowadays uh, we have uh, many, many vegetarians. But then within the vegetarian concept uh, we have uh, the ovolactum. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those who um, are ovolactians, that's uh, quite okay. But we have the vegans, and for those who are vegan, that's uh, quite okay. And then we have uh, the raw foodist, and for those that <laughs> we are raw foodist, because that's the best. So how we just uh, go about uh, with that um, ample knowledge, and even there are the um, vegetarians that are called, um, well, in, in Spanish, it would be the, those that eat some fish, pisco, but it, it sounds better in Spanish because of pescado pisco. So it's uh, vegetarians that eat a little bit of fish. Uh, we know, are we familiar with the uh, old concept of macrobiotics? Who here? Eh? No, not too much of macrobiotics. You, we know that George Osawa, the Japanese um, man that uh, was very, very sick uh, with uh, tuberculosis and his family uh, died because of it. 1920s um, was cured by a doctor in a small village in Japan. So that uh, thing impressed him so much that he went uh, deeply into learning Chinese medicine, nutrition, healing, and all that. And uh, he came out uh, with the concept of uh, macrobiotics. We know macro being a large, and biotics are large. So, um, he brought that to Europe, France, and then to the whole planet. And Misho Kuji, his most advanced uh, student, uh, helped to recreate it and then spread the word around. So he um, came to the States, I guess, in the 50s, and then went to Boston and there. Uh, created the, the very, very famous Kushi Institute. So when I had cancer, I went over there. I lived there, I lived there, and then I went to um, Hippocrates Institute in uh, Boston too, Dr. Anne Wigmore, very well-known lady, the, the person that uh, popularized wheat grass juice. If we drink uh, today, with grass juice and sprout is because Dr. Ann Gimbo just um, uh, worked with that and uh, popularized it around the planet. So uh, we know that most healers use food uh, plant-based 
their food. So now we know the big movement on food in organics. So the big question is, are we or are we not just uh, built, created, designed, imagined to eat meat? Are we? No. Are we not? We're not. Eh? We're not. We're not. No? Mm -hmm. Why not? We're not carnivorous. Eh? It damages our uh, Yeah, we know that. But why? The fact that very we are not. Why? Why would you say we are not carnivorous? Uh, we don't have the... Yes. We don't have it. We don't have it. Uh, let's uh, get undressed as we supposedly appear on planet Earth and try to go after a deer, a buffalo, kill it, <laughs> rip it. With what? No knife? It's a primitive. No. So, or, <laughs> get a, 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 a shark, a large fish, and just rip it at all. No, we cannot. Or fly. We do not fly. So, and, and, now, civilized, we bring here just a, a pig, and give you a knife, so, you are a carnivore, you are you, yes, so, <laughs> open it, piece of the liver, too young, and then uh, he just, oh, thank you, love it, no, we are not. So by feelings and by uh, the anatomy, we are not. Okay. And we know that allopathic doctors tell us that the moment we eat animal food, our cholesterol, the triglycerides, the uric acid goes up. And then, yes, the energy, we just, after picking out, we just tend to lose energy. But here, the avocado, so far nobody complains, oh no, I don't like that, the smell, oh no, no, that's a word, no, no. I, I, I doubt it, if I give you one or two avocados, oh, well, thank you, you just <laughs> pick it up with your bare hands. So, yes, we are born, uh, people to eat fruits, vegetables, roots, uh, leaves, leaves, <laughs> leaves, <laughs> many leaves, <laughs> many leaves, and we got to see nature and see what is uh, plentiful, and uh, we cook it. Yeah, yeah, we cook it. Yeah, we microwave it. Yeah, sure, we do. Do we? Should we? No, we shouldn't. No, we just uh, kill, kill it. And I was, uh, you know, talking in Venezuela with uh, people there. And said, oh, yeah, no, I know, I understand, excuse me, but they do, we do not cook at the carrot. It's too hard how we are going to eat it. There is no damage in cooking carrot. I said, okay, get the two pots, stainless, and then uh, you boiling water, both, and you put the carrots there. You know, and then your hands, when the, the water, of course, is boiling, and your hand in the other way, and you just count one, two, up to 20. So that means they going to destroy my hand. Okay, yes, your hands, eh? what about the carrot? No, 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 no. I guess uh, the cosmic uh, forces, uh, God, uh, Jehovah, uh, Allah, had uh, ample imagination to create means to cook the food for us to eat. No, 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 no. And besides, who likes, uh, who likes um, uh, cooked, boiled um, carrot juice? That's unheard of. But then we drink the Tropicana. <laughs> <laughs> but then what is in Tropicana? The vitamin C is just the first vitamin that is destroyed. But the, what about the proteins, uh, lipids in the meat? All there, and not for the better. 
And then they buy them this, buy, 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 all go. And then the subtle energies, the subtle energies in a mango, in a papaya, cooked, go. And we add sugar, and maybe water, and maybe things to make it the, maybe cheeses. Now, it won't go. So it seems, as it is to me, that we have to re-educate ourselves and accept what is given to us that is plenty to live on. Because cooked food, is, there is no end to it satisfy. And when we eat <laughs> two or three large mangoes, are you able to eat three large mangoes? That's a lot. Yeah, Are you? Not that many, no. No, not that many. But then it happened to me to eat the food the food and my wife says, you know, you are on the, your fourth plate as well. He said, I never was satisfied. It happened to me twice. To eat, 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 and I said, oh gosh, what's good. The thing is that our nervous system, our brain, cannot, uh, the mechanism for, uh, how we say in English, satisfaction to get that satisfied, it cannot win because it's not real. And then, are we the only special ones on planet Earth that cook food and it's okay because there is no other um, living entity from the microbes to the elephant that do cooking. So. Got to, got to be wrong to give fire to the food. And then when we eat uh, pork uh, cooked without salt or spices, that is horrible. We got to add what is not uh, really animal. Garlic, uh, onions, uh, chilies, uh, bay leaves, uh, cummins, or whatever. So, uh, we better educate ourselves. So I'm, um, I've been a uh, raw foodist for the last uh, maybe 35 years. And uh, what I um, experience, what I'm experiencing, not only me, my um, friends and uh, uh, the people who believe in what I say and do, my uh, client, uh, customer, say, oh, Puma, that's, that's, it puts me in a different uh, years. I feel nowadays, um, a little bit more than 25 years old, and I'm, uh, I'm very young inside. I feel like uh, 10, 15. The moment I eat cooked the beans or rice and meat or whatever, I see the difference, the way you are, you know, your shoes, you use immediately like a wall separate. Now I feel, I feel, I flow with the youth uh, uh, as a crowd. And but the moment I eat, I, I just just uh, different and I tend to be uh, tired or so. So, um, but if we go back in history, way back, when humans uh, appear, um, and, uh, of course, after um, the Garden of Eden, uh, as we said, they had no tools, no agricultural knowledge, no farms, no cattle. What are they going to eat if they could not, uh, didn't know to kill animals, just to plants? And then, as I said first, uh, abundance, it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, scarcity, fasting. And that's the idea. And we should incorporate it. We know that the, the, the East, the, the idea of fasting is more popular than here, but nowadays we do fast. But the thing is how we fast, that's important. Um, what we should do before fasting, for how many days. Um, if I'm working, should I, you know, uh, quit the working? So, yes. It seems that most knowledge got to be um, internalized by us as humans through learning. We learn from others, but 
we just got clouds of our eyes, relax. And yet some knowledge comes to us if we learn to ask. Dear God, cosmic um, uh, energies, divine intelligence, what I should do? Buy that car? <laughs> no. <laughs> Buy a Mercedes or wait for an electric car to show up. And then, you know. So, um, yes, it's by learning, practicing, and then trial and error. So, um, one thing I can assure you is that uh, Golden Rock will not. And there is not such a thing that uh, some people can do it. Others cannot. Now, all of us, all of us. But uh, how we combine it? I've seen people. I heard vegetarian. Oh no, vegetarianism is not for me. And I say, uh, you eat the greens? No, I don't like greens. But they are not uh, really tasting. That's the problem. When we go out and we see, yes, it's an. Uh, Maybe, I don't know what percent, percentage is planted, but in whatever place, it just is the power of light through the plants. So the plants, I say, is the placenta that anchor, anchor us to Mother Earth. And it's through the plant that everything comes. So we go into the rivers and there are plants in there. See, we send all the plants that some fishes eat and then the change of uh, life in that medium develops. I mean, it's uh, just uh, one eat the other. But for us, as uh, we must know now, eating dead animals, which are not even raised, are fabricated. Chickens, chicken is just horrible the way they are um, fabricated. They are not raised, but then we know now the free range chickens. We know that, which is a lot much better than, but we cannot eat well raw chicken. So it's a good uh, thing to think about that. Of course, we lose a lot of weight. But what uh, we there are aiming at is how, <laughs> how not to get sick, how not to grow old and lose the marbles and uh, not being creative and uh, maybe not being uh, quite uh, sexy because after all, it's not that bad. And uh, yes, many things. And then, what about enlightenment? What is enlightenment? Enlightenment is just, I would say, the ultimate if we are said that we only work, perform with 2% or 5% of our capacities in our nervous systems, brain, etc. Wouldn't it be marvelous just to have 80% of it? 90% of it, 100% of it. The stories we have uh, heard about um, in India, people being enlightened. The, uh, uh, one thing um, I uh, have read, that's okay, go ahead, <laughs> is that physically they cannot see the world as they did before. They just see the cosmic energy constantly falling. And we know, the people here that are familiar with um, healing with the hands and all that, um, that uh, people train can bring energy down and perform uh, greater things. I never believe it myself. Till I had the experience and I had the problem with my uh, right knee and then I was so in pain, so much in pain and my wife, uh, it was here in Miami, my wife said, can I do something on you? And I said, please do it, I cannot stand the pain, 
and she did. And I guess in 15, 20 seconds, I was alone on bed. She was by my right uh, on her side, collapsed. It was around 7 p.m. And then around 5, I just could move and go to the bathroom. And the pain was there, but not the way it was before. It was a lot, lot. So said, so what do you need? said, so, well, I learned that in the volume uh, with the guru, and uh, he taught me how to do it. You want to know how she did it? Yes. Yeah. OK, what she did is just relax, make a body this, close to her eyes, and so silvery, small, uh, like a um, uh, old Quaker falling on the person, and the person part that, that, that we were saying, that was a, that was a, so I think right now, still very uh, flakes evolving on all of you, which is the cosmic force. So, please, ask me questions. As many contradict me <laughs> as you can. I had, um, going back to the no cooking, yes. what about like lentils and beans that you can't normally eat, or potatoes? Generally, those are grains or vegetables that require traditionally boiling. So how do you address those particular vegetables or grains that require cooking? Vegetables that require cooking oil. Which one? Potatoes, actually. Yeah. Okay. So the question is what I do with the black beans? I just exactly. eat them the way they are? Okay. Well, black beans, the way they look now, were, were not really what they were when the first man or woman just started to make them, select it, and then bumpier, you know, larger and bigger. So the fact that there is black beans and cocaine and opium and hallucinogenic mushrooms, it doesn't mean we have to have them, do we? So there is a variety of things. How we go about. The thing is, potatoes are said very, they alkalize a lot the system, and there is a cure for ulcer, stomach ulcer, with the potato juice. So, if we have a Vitamix, we have a good um, uh, user, um, uh, which, uh, by the way, there is a marvelous American brand still made a mistake called Champion, which is just great. It's not the it's the what they call masticating ones. Great, I have a one. And uh, I make an excellent hot soup, um, 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 salty. Watery, no water, no salt, and then it's not cooked at all. So I even get potatoes, use them. I get um, camotes, um, uh, sweet potatoes, slices in the white mix. I get the garlic, onions, uh, ginger, uh, turmeric uh, in there. Lots of leaves, um, uh, lemon juice. Uh, what else? What else? Um, squashes. Uh, some directly into the Vitamix, other I use them, um, cabbages, incredible, the flavor. For me, and when I give it to, uh, you know, people that eat uh, meat or whatever, they say, oh please, this is how you do it. It's cooked, eh? They go, yes, it's cooked. <laughs> Later, no, it's not well. <laughs> yes or no? No, it's not. <laughs> Delicious. Delicious. So, is how we process yeah, all that. You, so you do a gazpacho. Pardon me? You do like a gazpacho. Como no. gazpacho. Oh, well, I blend it. Uh, what is gazpacho? Gazpacho is olive oil, oil. It's bread. There is no bread, but we call it bread, tomatoes, garlic, onions, and water, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
or the use of the tomato. That's what the, the pacho is, uh, uh, the Andalusian uh, dish. But then there is salt in there, and there is bread. And bread is the food of the fallen man. Because when we apply fire to the food, we are telling divinity, um, cosmic intelligence, uh-uh, you are wrong. No, it's not right. The, the, the apples there, no, no, the observers are wrong. We just peel them, slice them, water, little water, sugar, blah, blah, blah. now, now it's okay. And we eat it. That is, of course, there is no life in it. So is that no acceptable to you? With the sun? It makes sense. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You cook with the sun when you. <laughs> well, if we read um, the what supposedly Jesus uh, did and recommended, he recommended raw. So he says that you get uh, wheat and you let the angel of water penetrate. So we sprout it because we do know that eating grains is not too good because it's a loaded, it's a loaded grain with lots of fat oils and starches. Cannot. So, but when we let nature, the angels of water, to penetrate immediately, the grain starts to, in one day, one and a half day, a tiny little white thing to come out. And the metabolism of the grains and the inhibitors goes away. And then um, the fats convert into vitamins and vitamins, uh, vitamin B vitamins, and the starches that convert into other nutrients were, are okay for us. We know that in order to fatten uh, pigs, pork, hogs, uh, what we do is then cook the food. Yeah. And we know that getting fat is not the best. Right. And by getting fat, um, we get diabetes and sicknesses. And yes, it's not uh, nice, it's not at all. Who needs to be like this or with an extra 20 kilo? <laughs> Energy. Eh? How do you feel you, you can rather than the cat sick to when you feel not good and you feel alone or something, the diabetes comes very uh, here, something like that. How, how, how no, I, no, when you feeling your feelings is associated with the No, my feeling is no, respect. No. <laughs> my feelings is not telling totally higher intelligence. Yeah, it's okay. No, no, I'm not saying it will but the mango got to be a jelly. No, it's no good that way, you know. Those avocados, by the way, cook them. <laughs> is it what we should? No. Who's going to eat the avocado? Cook the avocado? That, that even mm -hmm. sounds like a murder or Oh boy, oh boy. But then we know in Korea and China, they eat them, uh, dogs. Mm -hmm. I mean, your pet dog, yes, yes, yes. Uh, can you tell me the difference between uh, organic vegetables and no organic vegetables? What is different are? Can you tell me? That's a big difference. A big difference. Now we are in the middle of organic, which are um, uh, somewhat <laughs> more expensive, and uh, but they not all of them. They are almost about the same as what we could get in other. Um, uh, public says or dixes or whatever. Yes, organic. What is organic? The term might be a little bit confusing. We are we happen to have GMO organic. It's possible. Organic is only not the quality of the seed, the way we grow it. And then organic is supposedly to be known chemicals for spraying or fertilizing or watering. So if uh, OSHA and Oregon Pills, the, the, those uh, agencies that certify organic, uh, tell us that 
in the first three years, we cannot have the certificate of organic. We wait and then the force, and they come inspect. So we use uh, compost, we use uh, seaweed, we use a uh, cow manure, horse manure, of uh, goat manure, and uh, we could use uh, ground stones uh, to add um, uh, minerals, and and we could uh, use sea water in a proportion of uh, three point five ounces with one within one gallon of water and um, the plants because you know we know in the seas every mineral is in there. Mm -hmm. So I, I answered your question about organics. But the organic um, uh, hybrids could be organic. GMO could be organic. So organic is, um, uh, is somewhat misleading. Is great, should be organic. But then, what type of seeds? Got to be the seeds that come since heirlooms. Mm -hmm. And uh, we say Creole, we say uh, uh, the seeds that are um, open pollinated, the seeds that uh, when you harvest them, it uh, produces more seeds that reproduce themselves. Do we know that you know are not even hybrid? Are not. Mm -hmm. So when we shop at Whole Foods and we think we're buying organic, but we don't know if we're buying GMO or we're buying hybrid. We don't know the seed. So we're so organic GMO is bad. That's not. I want to add to that. It's only been recently that Whole Foods joined up with some Monsanto products, so you have to be careful. Right. Again, you have to educate yourself, look what you're going to get, and make sure it's non-hybrid, mm -hmm. as, as stated. No, even hybrid. The hybrids are not accepted. You, you, you want certified organic. Yes. It's, in other words, untainted, untainted, un, un, uh, what's the word? The DNA not altered. So they have the heirloom seeds as stated. <laughs> so are they going to be required to? To yeah, let yeah. us know Me if it's organic GMO. Uh, they're fighting. They're fighting they're the fighting. labeling laws. Yeah. Correct. I don't know how the successful way, they are. The best way I found out because if you expect anybody to protect you, good luck. <laughs> so there's a lot of it's a business. It's a business. I remember when the person came here and and planted organic in the front that they gave me a gallon of chemicals. Yeah. And they say, you need to put this in the, there, uh, in the plant so it won't grow. And I go, well, they're going to grow the way they grow in the wild. You know, I'm just going to say hello to them, and then I'm going to put nothing on it. Mm -hmm. And they're growing fine. But they, it's okay for them to use chemicals. But what I suggest is we have, we're blessed with a lot of farmers in the Redland area. Yes. One of them is Tina's Farm. She's going to be having an open house mm -hmm. coming in October, the first Sunday of every month. And they're a co-op. There's no chemicals there, there's no GMOs, it's local, the air you breathe, the water you drink, that's the best place to get them. What's the name here? And what we did here is, uh, well, we, we came across a cabbage that we use and we put it outside and it lasted for five months as crisp as you can. <laughs> Never run them. You know, the, key, the, key, alive, eh? the key is that the bugs won't eat it, the chickens won't eat it. Uh -huh. and remains fresh forever, which is great for camping, but what is it going to do to your stomach? Yeah. So, yeah. the best thing is local farm, join a co-op, you know what you're getting, you're going to be visiting it, we're going to be doing group uh, trips to Tina's farm coming up soon. And that's the, thing, that's the best. Uh, know your farmer, like, yeah. you know, in the honey, know your beekeeper. Or else you're getting water and chemicals. It, it's getting to that point. It, it, it's been in that point. We just begin to realize it. Mm -hmm. So, what, what would you want to say? Um, no, I, Tina is the farm. Tina? Uh, it, Tina. Yeah, it's Tina. Tina's Pride. Tina? Tina. 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 And you can go to tinaspride.com uh, or join our email. We'll send you the information. But she's uh, tinaspride.com. It's a local farmer. Uh, I have known her for uh, over 20 years, and she has. Uh, she comes from a farming family. And when you go to her farm, 
uh, you realize the difference in the color and the taste, and also her passion. Yeah. Uh, she has the open house and always has two chefs uh, making food, and it's free. And you get fed wonderfully, and you get a tour, and you get to see what it's all about. You may join her every week. Uh, uh, she has boxes for different family sizes and so forth. And after that, we usually end up at the winery, which is around the corner, which is also next door. Uh, I support your local farmer, and you'll, you'll, he'll tell you about the tour. He's so bad. It's a beautiful thing. So, technology, what you were about to ask, I suppose, say. You know, I have to backtrack. See, before I asked about the farming, um, I think it's a question that the, you've already asked. About organic. About organic, yes. Yeah. Uh, that how do we know if it's truly pure okay. organic? As we know that, um, what is it? Uh, I would ask um, all of you people, we are, are we in dangerous uh, times? Are we facing more and more difficulties? Are we? Is it what mm -hmm. is happening right now? Yeah, well, yes. Eh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, if we go to the Mayans and if uh, the big Mayans acknowledge that, of course, um, I guess all of us were, mm -mm, let's see, 2012, let's see. So it seems nothing really dramatic um, happened. But if we go the Mayans on one side and then we go to the Hindus in India and the Vedical culture, they just uh, coincide and very probably with the Aztecs and Incas and the, um, uh, the tremendous knowledge of the um, um, Egyptians, they coincide that in their eternal cycles and movement on our galaxy, the Milky Way, our solar system with others of course in constant uh, moving, m m m moving, constantly moving, that uh, there is a cycle of 25,000, 26,000 years that uh, um, the um, uh, Vedic divided in two zones on the ascending and two on the descending. So now we just, it's uh, even, you know, the scientific uh, minds agree with that. We are going toward the center of our goddess. It doesn't mean we are going to get to the very, very center. So the center is what? Wisdom, light, knowledge. So the closest we get there, that era, is called Satya. And Satya in Sanskrit means wisdom. So we just left the most uh, terrible era, which is Kali Yuga. Uh, all of us have uh, read about the Kali Yuga. We are now in Duapara Yuga, then comes uh, Treta Yuga, and then Satya. Of course, uh, that uh, encompasses uh, 13, 12,000 uh, years. But uh, no, we see ecology. 20 years ago, mm -hmm. very little or no uh, talking, uh, doing about the ecology, we see uh, people giving more and um, we see changes. We even see kids are not exactly the way they used to. In my times, kids just uh, saliva kept uh, coming and they, now the sucking thing is not too popular and kids are really obviously are brighter, uh, different. Uh, and the whole planet is changing in our very own eyes. We see the emergence of a huge, a tremendous power in China. What is going to be the world there, economically, politically, in 10 years from now? The uh, United States um, is uh, changing dramatically. I mean, 40 years ago, a black as a president, oh gosh. <laughs> but now, yes, yes, Obama is there. Whether we like him or not, he's there. And more to come. 
we might even have a black woman as a president of the state. And we see countries changing, the whole planet is changing, the concept of food is changing. Maybe, maybe 2050, all of us are we are going to be, of course, there by that time. Um, we are all raw foodists. And then maybe we just, instead of using a cell phone, we just take it, take it. And it is that nowadays what is coming in technology is so. The idea is no, no. Might, darker forces battle, uh, you know, trying to keep their privileges, their things, their power, but we are going toward the light. Nothing to worry about, but we, we just keep closing our front doors and uh, keeping the eyes open. But no, we are going to the light. So we got to be very optimistic. Oh my God. But, but change is what the Greeks used to say is, um, the only thing that is constant is change. We like it. Mm -mm. We, we might prefer, oh, the way it was, uh, the way it was rotting. Remember the 20s, the 40s, uh, the scarcity, very little jobs. Uh, we think, no, 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 no. We only, I think, enjoy in the state a good time during the 50s because of the war. But no, the best moment is just uh, right now. We got the technologies. How we could before talk, communicate is marvelous what is happening. And, and, and if we just venture, and if just are adventurous enough to say, the hell with uh, giving fire to the food and experiment, you're not going to lose anything, you will be raw for this forever. And then you know that you respect whoever created food for mankind not to change it, not to alter, not to GMOs it, not to hybridize it, just pure organic. And then, then we are rediscovering from the Vedic, pre Vedic cultures in India that if we work with uh, Agni Hotra. Anybody here knows about Agni Hotra? Agni, fire in Sanskrit. Hotra, Hotra, healing. Homa farming, H-O-M-A. Sounds a little better for you. Okay, what is it? It is exactly having a uh, deeper knowledge of how the sun, the sun, eh? The sun, everything in our life, everything. Sun and moon and other plants and stars will burn our life, our biorhythm, our lives. So the sun is everything. So that's why Egyptian to the song, Ra, whatever. So if we are very exact, that's um, about um, uh, moving subtle. I think I know what you're talking about. It's almost like in the realm of astral theology. People don't understand how much planets have effects on other planets. Yeah. It's like, you know, having uh, different lenses. You put one lens, you go to the eye doctor, put one lens, another, and then hundreds of lenses there. Mm -hmm. By adding subtracting, you're going to see different things. Mm -hmm. You have different uh, focuses. And the same thing with the sun, and then the, the positions of the, of the planets, whether it's Mercury, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, whatever, they have all different in influences for the desired effect. Yeah. There's a book called... Um, Future Science by Michael Cottrell. Maybe you might have heard of him. Yeah. Yes, he talks about that, mm -hmm. about the energies of the sun the day you're born. Yeah. What was the position? What was the energy of the sun? And it came up to like 144 possible personalities oh, that person can have being born on that specific day. Sure. That's why these astrologers and all this stuff, they want to know your birth date. 
you know, and preferably the time if possible. Yeah. This way they know exactly what the focus was at that point in time, which helped you become who you are, like that. It's, 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 a, it's a fascinating, what's the word? It's a fascinating study, and then you learned about it in the Bible, because when you he heard about when God was talking to Job, where were you when I sent out the Maseroth, the Zodiac? Because everything has to do with the Zodiac. You know, the age of Pisces, the age, age of, of Taurus, Taurus, now we're the age of, of, of Aquarius, That's, all that have stuff. They their value, tremendous their knowledge. So in Agni Hotra, we know Agni is a fire, and we, when we read the news, India is just uh, deployed the um, second generation of Agni um, ballistic missiles. Okay, they use because uh, the Hindu is mostly... Um, um, the former language uh, and, uh, spoken, and by the way, all um, uh, earth um, uh, languages are derived from uh, the first language spoken in um, in India. So, at the exact precise time of the sunrise, in a uh, copper um, uh, pyramid, um, uh, Kalmanil, and Guy, we all know what he is, and then we are um, like one minute or so before, and we start. At the moment, the sunrise and mantra, Surya Yu Swaha, Surya Yu Idam Namama, Prajapata Yu Swaha, Prajapata Yu Idam Namama, that's it, that's the ritual. So, subtle uh, with the fire, um, of course. The subtle energies moving and what we see as a result is miraculous, incredible. You got to see it and the effect. And the idea is that the rays hit, get the uh, elements. So we are talking here about very subtle, but subtle things, energies. We know that if we go to an X-ray, a lady within the first month of pregnancy, um, her fetus her, is going to die because the X-ray radiation. And we know that the guy who is performing that, he goes out, she goes out and just creep it, but we feel nothing. We feel nothing. It might even not be an X-ray. They say no feeling, no, but it's powerful. Cancer and all the damage, and then of course uh, uh, helps doctors to see better into their body. So, the, what happens, and then we do it at sunset, exactly. So, the race inside and creates a very complex, not well for us at least, uh, uh, things that happen. And uh, mangoes might be grown the whole year. And then um, uh, male bees uh, gather um, uh, nectar, uh, fruits, uh, different flavor, exuberant, uh, and the certain areas just uh, flowering. So uh, that's Anihotra uh, rituals, and the technique is called Homa, H O M A, um, agriculture. Homa is the cow, the cow, the coma, they make it. Uh, the fire? Yes. Nothing. They call it the, the sacred fire. Mm -hmm. I learned, I had my first um, uh, Anihotra ritual maybe 35 years ago here in Miami. And a friend invited me on and said, no, and, you know, not uh, wearing apartment, the fire, oh, I'm not wearing the cow money, you know, but I'm too happy about that. And then, yes, I wasn't too close when the guys were performing the ritual. And then they started, oh my God. I felt how we say, inside, inside the leg and, you know, thigh bones, I felt that they were just pulling my marrow, marrow, marrow. Mm -hmm. And I said, what do I do? I laugh. I scream, <laughs> I get out of here, so, and I said, I'm going crazy, 
or what's happening to the other people who are normal. So I said, I was the non believer. I said, You idiots, you are going to learn <laughs> what the forces are. And that was my first encounter. So we didn't have um, worms, you know, there was worms in the ranch, and now we got plenty. And when people go to the ranch, oh, oh my lawyer there, the licenciado Manuel Mendoza, I said, Puma. I don't know what is in here, but it's marvelous, it's such, and we perform a Nihotra. And now we have, I was talking to you about that, a lady who was in India, and um, so the guy who brought a Nihotra here to a very small group, uh, um, uh, uh, Maestro Basan, he um, uh, just uh, had to, to create three places on planet Earth, uh, one in Chile, uh, Valley, Elki Valley, one in uh, Poland, which is just a marvel, I would say, never been there. And one in India in a very bad, desertic um, area, which is just so that lady being in those two places and in Mexico, she's Mexican, being out for many years in those places, she's going to come to the ranch to just help us establish a uh, home ranch, yes. No, I was just nodding. Um, just <laughs> yes. And uh, isn't it marvelous that how we are rediscovering? And I foresee, I, I would like to think that the, the ancient knowledge of the Egyptians are going to be ready for us to use, enjoy, and the Mayans that all the, um, um, their, um, how we call it, um, uh, Writings and pictures we are marvelous, by the way, and some of them we even see. Um, a big no, no, okay, scratching, <laughs> scratching, just yes, scratching your head. Yes, it is hard to believe, but yes, it's, 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 it's the good thing to hear about. Uh, marvelous. So we are rediscovering. It's like uh, the Renaissance in Italy, the Middle Ages, and then you open up. Uh, you know, painting, marvelous art, uh, economy, things. Uh, so, so we might even end up not eating at all. Do you think it's possible not to eat a big one today? You know, yeah, I think it's so. Do you think? Well, I, I, we were, when Peter Adams was there, I fasted with him for 41 days. Oh, of course, it was very easy now, nothing dramatic. And then I had not bought the food, so it was not easy for me to go to, to town. The old town is only eight kilometers away, and just kept having the tea. That's your day? That's your day? I'm okay. I'm okay. So, and then, um, uh, I kept uh, drinking the tea for uh, three months without going to town. And I said, hey, I wanted to go to a certain uh, guru in India that was going to teach me how to live without eating, seeing the sun. And Ira Manito Rakan is doing that in India. It's an internet. Yes, we can live without eating solid food because the most powerful food in this reality is the sun. In Maya King. That's where the energy comes. And if we attune and we um, do some medicine in our bodies, it is possible. And then subtle energies and magnetism and then our intention. If we believe it is possible, it is possible. Questions? So is it the 21 day, 21 day fast, is that customary as the, like the detoxification uh, standard? Yes, it is. We should fast. Of course we can fast. I would say fast every week one day at least, or two, better two days. <coughs> but how we fast, we let our intestine, you know, to be um, filled the food with uh, fecal matter, mm, it's not too advice, because the intestine is constantly absorbing. So we should have a laxative before we're not going to have a, a pain on our right side, and then we have a, 
what um, uh, produce, which is delicious, by the way, and is uh, very effective in most people, or sea salt, uh, one and a half of uh, um, um, spoon of uh, sea salt in a glass of water, and we just uh, clean our intestine, and then we have a chamomile tea, not from a bag, but it's a real chamomile thing, or a ginger tea, or no tea, we go inside, every day, feel great, relax, go have a yoga, we want to, and then we just stop working our digestion mechanism, which hasn't been the you know, uh, relax and go for it a while. And then we, you know, say, now I'm going to you know, get out of my yard for a while, and so I uh, fast for one week, two, three, four. It seems that the 40 days of fast is a classic because we go um, uh, by seven, seven, seven. Some say, no, that should be uh, seven by seven, 49. But uh, it is said that Jesus fasted for one, for one day. Mm -hmm. Moses fasted for uh, three months. A Buddha. Mm -hmm. So there is no end to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, we got to be uh, advised about uh, uh, experience a uh, person, what I do, what we do over there, is the first week or ten days of water. Well, water is very aggressive. Very aggressive. We just feel that the people just melt away. And then I introduce my ginger tea. And then the, I remember that we had at that time, it was a sort of a cold dish and, you know, uh, rainy. And uh, we got uh, Christina from Germany, a guy from the Mexico City, uh, Argentinian guy. And then we have a British guy over there, and they were fasting, doing it very well. So, but they just went, you know, water, and uh, it was cold. So I said, I'm going to you know, put the kids. I'm going to make a hot tea for them. And in that moment, I created the ginger tea. I uh, gave it to them, and what you heard was, oh, <laughs> I know. How I said, oh God, what is it? And then they felt so thankful, so great, and so on. They said, well, from now on, I'm going to keep giving them hot ginger, and I have it, and I'm, I'm missing it right now. So it's just great. The thing is, how to uh, go about it. <coughs> Question? You, man, talk to me. Uh, what kind of vegetables do you have in the garden there? Oh, jicama, we know the Mexican jicama root. Very alkalizing. <laughs> <laughs> and then the regular, the regular, no, it's very interesting. And then, yes, we have the Mexico, uh, how we call it, the dragon fruit, we have seen it here, which is uh, strange. Uh, very appealing with the lots of uh, dark seeds in the uh, white, delicious. The price here is hefty. Over there we have uh, that for um, 20 Mexican pesos kilo. Yes, of course, no, that's what we have here. I love it. I must have uh, one or two per day. And uh, of course, uh, we have uh, chayotes, and we have uh, what we have here, what we got there, other things. We have a leaf which is called chaya. We see Jews uh, since antiquity by the Mayans, and they use it for everything. It's a marvelous uh, um, uh, leaf uh, with a lot of chlorophyll. I have it every single day. And um, yes, uh, and the fruits. <laughs> the fruit is in Yucatan. Today, um, um, Rafael gave me a little bit, uh, how they call it? It's not sour stuff, but it's what? Uh, apple. I don't know, uh, we call it anon in Spanish. A sh uh, sugar apple. Eh? Sugar apple. Sugar apple. Yes. Little thing. Delicious. Mm -hmm. And I so said, I would like, Robert, I would like, this is delicious. I would like to, you to have tasted what you got there. Mm -hmm.
Incredible. And the price is just incredible too. And then the mangoes, the mangoes we get here from Mexico are water heated and treated because of the fruit fly. And then we have everything, everything, everything. <laughs> Living in Jupiter, uh, I feel myself very blessed and uh, I'm trying to. In Yucatan, is your growing season year-round? Oh, well, yes, of course. <laughs> yes, of course. The whole year. So you're always producing different plants? The whole year. The whole year. Crops, I should say. In, in the ranch, I don't know, it wasn't before, but the, uh, the place was uh, really extremely uh, interesting to people. Uh, but uh, now, um, uh, during the days, I'm talking now about hot, hot uh, summer, the weather is not hot. And uh, during, in hot uh, summer, during the night, you better cover up, you know, cover up. And uh, we had the people from Nebraska, understand Nebraska is cold here, isn't it? Nebraska region in the winter, yes. Yes, and when they went over there, it was someone that says, we cannot uh, this is too cold, and they ask for blankets and all that. And yes, during winter time, and we are close to the equator, it's cold. But is that type of uh, cold that is so is cold? Elevated? Elevation? No, well, we are, we are, but not really, it's no mountainous, uh, it's not high, high land. So we have the Yucatan uh, Peninsula and we have the Yucatan State. So it goes um, uh, rather, you know, uh, uh, low to the sea. And when it goes to Guatemala, that's high, 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 you know, water could be like a 90 meters, no 90 feet, 90 meters down there. Wow. But uh, as we know, the water is great tomorrow. And people uh, comment on that, that being at the ranch, they say, oh, what's I feel here so well, so... I need, of course, well water. We do not have uh, electricity, as we know it here. We have a solar panel that activate the pump. And yes, we use uh, candles <laughs> at night. How romantic. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, ask me questions. I expected you to uh, kill me asking questions. <laughs> Yes. So you don't eat bread? Some bread? Bread? Uh-huh. Do you eat bread? Where to get bread? Bread. Bread, yes, bread. B-R-E-A-D. Uh-huh. Is that... Uh, yeah. Well, what is bread here? Yeah. Now, where? What the... Uh, did you eat? Bread? Did you eat bread? No, of course. <laughs> no. It's a, a, a bad food. It's the food of the holy man. Why? Um, what, what, what I mean um, when I talk about the falling uh, humans, the falling humans, I think, yes, where do you come from? Where do we come from? Where do we come from? Yes. <laughs> Who put us in here? Who did? How this happened? There is always a beginning and supposedly an end for everything. So how was that? How was that? How did that happen to you? The Big Bang. The Creator. Some people, yes. The we have the creationist and we have the evolutionist. Is it that what we say in English? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how would that happen? Myself, sorry, myself, I think that we are an experiment of a very advanced culture, extraterrestrial, as we do now, biotechnology. And then if we go to the Bible, for those who read the Bible, it is said that um, women, women were just from the rib, and when I was kid, oh, what idea, why the rib? And we now know that they get the, the material and just, you know, fetish, whatever, do whatever they have to, but I'm just creating. It's just a very advanced civilization. They use the, their DNA, and maybe some 
lesser quality than this. So we are a little bit of time kinky, but we are just, it is said, created in the image of a God. So maybe it wasn't exactly God with the whole long beard doing the biotechnological thing, but in the spirit, in the wisdom, in the intelligence of God. What uh, Jean Jesus said, when two or more are in my name, I'll be there. So we could be always in the light. And I was having a biodynamic agriculture uh, uh, course in the Mexico City, and the guy over there, a guy from Lithuania, Canadian, Lithuania, Canadian, the first thing is say, if you are smart, don't leave home without surrounding yourself with the light. So I always remember that. So we must be always in the light, in the intelligence, in the good vibration, in love. We love ourselves, we love others. So yes, we were just the design created. There's, yeah, they did some studies about the human DNA and, and of all the genesis, geneticists of the world, they say our DNA does not go beyond like 240,000 years. Something happened. And then you look in the Bible, if you feel, feel that's the record, and unfortunately it's written in code, so to speak, so we don't get the true, the, the, unless you know the code, yeah, I'll do the that. true, like that. and they said, remember in Genesis it says, let us make man in our image. So you see, but even these people, whoever they are, they call them the Elohim before they got use the word Jehovah, but the El, that's where El comes from, E-L, if you look at the derivation of El, you Elder, Elevators, and all that stuff, something above, above you see, uh, Elders, all that yes. stuff. Yes, and they... Well, um, to finish though, um, Okay, I'll, I'll finish. I'll, okay. Oh, yeah, those people, the, supposedly, if we were created by these people with genetic whatever, um, even they recognize a creator. They call them um, creator of all. They even recognize a creator and above the, them. The Bible you mentioned, the, 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 um, uh, Jehovah says, um, the, no, the, 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 uh, the reference is our creators, not one. Several, the equipment, you mm -hmm. know, the, the biotechnology, the system, the teeth, and that. Um, and then in India, um, uh, the um, uh, gurus and swamis are very concerned about enlightenment and what we have heard about enlightenment and things like that. And it is said that, that uh, enlightenment is the the goal of the goals in our life because then we get closer because of uh, augmentation, high augmentation, dramatic augmentation of intelligence, expansion of consciousness when we just, uh, what is Kundalini, the energy at the base you know, of the um, uh, spine activated, it is uh, the coil like a serpent and then the Maya have a constant affair with the serpent the serpent, even we have um, a ritual where the serpent goes down the pyramid, which is an incredible thing, how they knew how to do that and build that. And then when the earners go down and perform, um, um, traverse all the chakras, boom, alignment. Yes, sense of enlightenment or alignment? Enli enlightenment, enlightenment, you know, to be illuminated. Yeah. Um, Santos Bonacci, he's on the internet, uh, on YouTube, look him up. He, no, Santos bon, uh, um, Bonacci, yeah, Bonacci. Mm -hmm. He talks about this enlightenment, this energy that goes up, 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 up. We, uh, fortunately, through our foods and things like that, it doesn't get to this point with the, to, the, uh, to the center here, to the third eye, the pineal, to open it up. Yeah. That's why when you see the staff, you see the double uh, snake there, that's the double helix. But I, it went, goes. I went to and I said, I would say that it's very, very hard to get enlightened eating Cuban roasted pork. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> see, all these foods are tainted, and so we don't have the pure I food. Food. So <laughs> so this so Dr. Puma, Dr. Puma knows about food medicine. He knows what is good, what is bad, like that, you know, and what fits your type.
You yeah. see, unfortunately, we eat, you know, what we believe, what was, what, what they tell us on the TV there, yeah. and it's not good for any type. Yeah. <laughs> you see, and so that's why we're not gonna get to that point where we're illuminated. We open up and we say, "Oh my goodness, wait, 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 I see what you're talking about." <laughs> that's it. Oh. That's it. One. One day a year, la noche buena, come on. One day. You commit to see. Un día al año para mecar. Y el resto para, ay, no lo debía haber hecho. Y ya dónde. But also, you know, the, the emotional aspect, because you quoted Jesus. Um, he said it's not what goes into the mouth of the man that defiles him, but what comes out. So, who can is okay? Hmm? So cocaine and whiskey. No, I, well, I don't well, know. Well, it goes through my mouth and, and my mouth. And I, I didn't say it. I'm just saying in the Bible. There's, so eating, there's eating a lot and lot of fat is okay, eh? No, no, no. I no. So what we need is an interpretation of that because it's that important. But the thing is like this. What 